A funny thing happened to me when I became a mom in December, and that is I became obsessed with babies. Previously thought they were all just kind of potatoes, but no, in fact, they're pretty much the best thing ever. And today we have one of the best things ever, babies, like the one making a whole bunch of noise in the back, wrapped up in some of the worst things ever, government corruption and fraud. Put together, it's a story I just could not let go because anything else would be flat out injustice. Keep watching for the details, but be warned, unless you hate children, it is going to make you big mad in more ways than one. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We do have Liberty Baby behind the camera again today and she is not exactly thrilled with this story. And big shout out to Decoy Voice for randomly popping up in my feed and covering the first part of this sordid tale. Alas, I don't have any affiliates that sell wood chippers, so I can't plug them on this video. If I did, it would be the perfect slot. I will, however, tell you about the tasty blackout coffee that I drank this morning and at lunch and later this afternoon, because let me tell you, stay at home momming while simultaneously railing against government corruption on the internet would not be possible without an IV drip of caffeine. So check them out at blackoutcoffee.com slash Liberty Doll. <sighs> All right, folks, buckle up. The first leg of this story started in August of 2021, when a young mom, known simply as Rachel, was pushing her eight-month-old son, Charlie, in his stroller. The entire incident was caught on video, and it is not for the faint of heart. The pair were in an LA neighborhood when suddenly a car showed up out of nowhere. Mama and baby tried to squeeze against the wall to avoid it, but the car plowed right into them, sending both mom and baby flying. The car took off, but was chased down by witnesses after an oncoming truck swerved and rammed the car into a telephone pole. When police showed up at the scene, it turned out that the car was a rental. It was being driven by a kid who had just turned 16 the day before with no license, who also had pot and Xanax in his system and was on probation for a previous felony. That felony happened to be poisoning a girl in his high school. That is the first part that will make you mad, that this dumb high kid with a previous history of violence almost killed a baby and his mother. Luckily, mom and baby were okay, though the baby had a tire mark across his head and had night terrors and panic attacks for months, but was otherwise fine. But here's the real kick in the teeth. Because he's a juvenile, the DUI crash wasn't considered a violent crime. The DA put out a press release about the incident saying there was no evidence of attempted murder and charged the kid with assault and leaving the scene. And in the end, he only got probation. And as I dove into this story, it turns out that this kid wasn't the only one to get let off the hook under LA District Attorney George Gascon. He has a long history of letting folks go, including child with little to no jail time, and in one case of a trans who began identifying as a woman after his arrest, didn't even have to register on the offender list. His victim was 10 years old. How would you do it? Wood chipper. A wood chipper? Yeah. Did you see Fargo? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, the violent 2014 attack remained a cold case for several years. James Tubbs, later Hannah Tubbs, was arrested eight years later at the age of 26. Tubbs had already been arrested for battery, drug possession, and probation violations in Washington and Idaho. Tubbs, who I will refer to as a she to not get struck down by the YouTube gods, had also been convicted of assault with a deadly weapon in another county and had been accused of another minor. That child, by the way, was four years old. Why aren't you in jail? But because she wasn't quite 18 at the time of the incident in LA County, which occurred in a Denny's ladies room, Tubbs was tried as a juvenile at age 26. 
She was later caught on a recorded phone call boasting about the light sentence she was going to get and talking explicitly about her victim. In some of these calls, Tubbs even admitted to identifying as trans in order to be sent to a women's prison. Gascon's office denied knowing about the calls, despite the fact that recordings of the calls were sent to his office. To which the DA's office later said, oh, well, we would have tried her as an adult if we knew she didn't have remorse. Instead, the 26-year-old was sentenced to two years in a juvenile probation facility. Ju ju juvenile detention? Someone please tell me how any of that is okay. This DA's rap sheet of light sentences is so bad that up until approximately five minutes ago, he was facing a potential recall effort in California with his woke progressive policies being so unpopular that practically every prosecutor in the county signed up on the recall petition. And this is where the plot thickens. The group behind the recall efforts sent in their 715,000 signatures just a couple weeks ago. And then LA County, which had a less than 1% rejection rate of mail-in ballots in 2020, rejected nearly 200,000 of those signatures as invalid. The county claims that 27.3% of the signatures were either not from actual registered voters or had addresses or signatures that didn't match the rolls. Oh, well, that's convenient. The number of rejected signatures made the total about 40,000 short of triggering the recall, and so LA County put out a press release that no further action will be taken and Gascon will remain in place. Which is absolutely invigorating. A former LA County deputy DA is co-chair of the recall efforts and says the group is going to use all of their legal authority to review the rejected signatures and the process the county used to reject them. She reminded Fox News that more than half a million signatures are in addition to 37 cities voting no confidence in the district attorney, and more than 98% of Gascon's own prosecutors supported the recall. For the county to forge ahead in that context and pretend that everything is peachy and hunky-dory is utterly ridiculous. And new this week, the teen hit-and-run driver just had himself an early release hearing. Meanwhile, Gascon has been spending his time demoting the prosecutors that supported the recall. Unfortunately, the government tends to not usually have oversight over itself, so I'm sure that absolutely nothing is going to happen. Now, if this guy were smart, he would step down anyways and go softly into the night, but that is also very unlikely. While I will continue to follow the recall efforts, it seems that at least this chapter is done and unfortunately doesn't have a happy ending. <sighs> that is it for today's video, and boy am I glad I don't live in California. Ugh. Please do all of the algorithm things, like, share, subscribe, get this story out there because frankly, it's disgusting and people need to know about it. If you're feeling extra spicy, you can also check out the various support options in the description, including Patreon, Subscribestar, and PayPal. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in the next one.